Hey guys, welcome to a new video. This will be the first video in, in a short Linux tutorial that I'm going to do where we're going to go over like the basic stuff about uh, the L L Linux operating system, the kernel, and we're going to talk about like some security and networking uh, within Linux. So this will be a short uh, short, short, short tutorial uh, with a couple of videos on about like five minutes where we go, go over the basic stuff about Linux and the stuff that I just mentioned. So in the first video here, we're going to talk about the kernel and the user space in Linux. So first of all, here we have a diagram of the, the new, new uh, Linux operating system. So this is a, an example of uh, a Linux operate, operating system running. So first of all, here we have our user space here where we have our applications and uh, our, our applications and the things that we're doing in user space. So we have uh, it is divided into like two pieces here. So we have the user, user space here and then we have the, like the kernel space uh, down under the hood here. So the user space here, we have the applications that we're running on, uh, on our system. And then we also have a, a window manager and some libraries um, in our user space as well. And then to interact between the user space and the Linux kernel, uh, then we will have this uh, kernel interface, which is the system call interface. So when we're making, uh, making calls from the user space and we want to do something on the hardware, uh, we need to use these systems calls here from the user space to, to actually like do operations in the Linux kernel. So this is the system call interface, which is the, like the interface between the user space and the Linux kernel. And then we have some process management down here. So we're like, we are, we are going to like manage how the processes are, are executed uh, on, the, on, the, on the hardware and, and stuff like that inside of the Linux kernel. So it will, it will, it will do the process management uh, by executing the processes with some kind of scheduler. And we also have some IPC, which is the end of process communication. So like how different processes um, communicate um, in between each other. And then we also have a virtual file system of the actual like file system that we have in, in hardware. So we can use the virtual file system for our applications and do system calls to the virtual file system. And then we also have some memory management. So uh, the Linux kernel, uh, will take care of the, the memory management of the applications and the processes running in the Linux kernel. And then we also have some network subsystems. So if you just want to have some like networking, uh, it also happens in the Linux kernel and we have some, some security over here as well in the kernel. And then we'll have these drivers and dynamic modules here, which is like, um, which is like a piece of code that we can load into the Linux kernel while it's running. So this is really good if we have like, for example, some drivers or dynamic modules that we want to load into the Linux kernel and make uh, the Linux kernel as simple, simple as possible. And then when we need a, a specific module or like a specific uh, piece of code, then we'll just load it in dynamically while the Linux kernel is already running. And then we have some our, our architecture dependent code before we can go down here to the hardware uh, where we have the process the architecture here. So we have the user space, which is talking to the Linux kernel here by with the system interface. And then the Linux kernel actually like uh, do the operations on the hardware. So this is an example of a system call. So we have a user program here that is running in, in the Linux operating system here. And then we have uh, this write command here, where, which we call from a user program. Then we'll go down to the C library here, which is the uh, glibc here, uh, where we have this write command. And then this will call, uh, a, this will be a system call uh, to the Linux kernel. So we go from the user space to the kernel space. And then we have like a table that we can look up with the system calls um, in the kernel down here. So we can see that in this case, we want to write uh, to something from this user program. So we'll use this syswrite command here, uh, which is the system call command that will be executed um, in the kernel. And then that write command will actually like do something uh, with the hardware from the kernel. So the last thing here we're going to talk about is, is modules because like what is a module and, and what, how, how is it used in Linux? So a module, as we're already talking about, like it's a piece of code or like some kind of driver um, that we, I, I like want to like statically compile into our our kernel, or we have, want to have it as a module that can that can be like loaded in when it's needed. So down here we have these user applications that are running, um, which is talking to the Linux kernel uh, with system calls, and then the Linux kernel is talking to the hardware, and then in between the kernel core here and we have the modules here. So we have the kernel core code here, and then we have modules that can be loaded in. Uh, while the actual like kernel is running. So if we want to have some driver for uh, for some things that we're doing or we want to execute some pieces of code uh, that is not needed just like for general purposes, then we can actually ha like have it in a module and then load it in dynamically when we needed it. And, and this will like improve the performance of the kernel because the kernel should only run, run what, what is needed at the moment. And then if we don't need a module running, like there's no point in having it inside of the kernel running. So instead we just, uh, we just, um, 
load in the module when it's needed and it will improve the performance of like the Linux kernel and how your system is, is running. So that's just a pretty short video here where we've been over like uh, the operating system of Linux and some modules and an example of a system call. So thank you guys for watching this video and remember to hit the subscribe button under the video here and also the bell notification. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. So thank you guys for watching. See you in the next one.